Of all the planets out there in our solar system, the one that has the best marketing team is Mars. I mean, seriously, we call their likely fictitious occupants Martians. Its cool nickname is the Red Planet. It has its own candy bar, even though science has yet to prove that nougat came from space. Heaven, maybe? Space? I don't know. Now there's a place where scientists can go to prepare in case Earthlings ever make the trip out there. Here's Ali Ward to explain. Wade miles deep into the sharp edges of this Utah landscape, and you'll find something otherworldly. The Mars Desert Research Station. A project of the Mars Society, which is a nonprofit organization advocating human exploration of Mars, this is a place where teams of analog astronauts live in isolation for two weeks at a time, mirroring aspects of living on Mars. Crews have been coming here since 2001, and this is Crew 202, six scientists from Purdue University. I took a bumpy ride to meet them in a desolate, dreamlike reality. Oh, wow. Welcome. <laughs> Commander Cesare Guaraniello gave me a tour and explained the group's mission. What we're doing here is not only uh, pretending to be on Mars and living as if we were Martian, but we're also doing research projects to try to figure out what difficulties we might encounter once we are on Mars. That pretending means remaining indoors or within the tunnels that connect the buildings at all times, with one exception, which we'll get to in a minute. Here, they study everything from microgravity horticulture to human biology, to geology, to engineering, to the human condition. What is the most important research you think you're doing here? It's hard to decide because we're doing so much important research. Uh, sometimes I feel that the most underestimated is the social and human factors. A lot can happen in two weeks when six people are in a small habitat living all together. But the excitement for one activity in particular is palpable, the EVA space parlance for extravehicular activity. You've probably seen images of the real thing like this. Yes, it's space time? Yes, it is. Oh my gosh. The crew invited me along on today's simulated EVA. First, you're wearing this flight suit, this jumpsuit, and then radio. So put this in your pocket. Except so, for it's a space seems suit. Seems easy. And I will watch your hair. Tell me why this process. We're simulating the depressurization of the airlock. And now what would happen on Mars is that the air is being sucked out of this room. Ah, uh, yes. So that then we can open the outer door and get outside. Once outside, we hopped on our rovers and headed out into what felt like another planet. I would say I'm in seventh heaven, but I'm in Mars. Finally, on foot with our packs, we explored until we found some rocks to investigate. We're heading closer to that mountain wall that I can see on the left, so that Dennis can take his radiation measurement. We could barely scratch the surface of all that goes on here in a given day, but it's clear that this mission is vast and deeply personal. What is it like for you as a commander to see your team all working together and really enjoying the experience? Oh, I, I can get very emotional here. I, I can almost cry because it's, it's amazing to see them walking around and working on their experiments, and they are really good at teamwork. Teamwork on a scale that is truly out of this world. <laughs>